Good morning and welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is head and heart. And um, we often, in our, in our pursuit of awakening and transformation, we talk about moving from our head to our hearts. And uh, I want to talk today about creating an integration of the two rather than one or the other, um, creating an integrated sense of being and self. And good morning, good morning, Rosalyn. Welcome. Great to have you here this morning. Uh, we're talking about head and heart and and actually including all of ourselves in, in the process of awakening body, mind, and spirit. So before we get started with that, uh, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, all your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue, and now let's Press our palms together and rub your hands vigorously together. I love this part because um, it brings me present to my physicalness, but it also warms up my hands. Anyway, allow yourself to feel the temperature, the pressure, the motion, all the sensations, the tickling and tingling when you stop and allow all those sensations to bring you present, to bring a new presence to your experience of being in this marvelous physical form that enables us to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So it's Friday. Oh my gosh, the week just flew by. Um, and today we're talking about head and heart. And so many of us, I, I think our culture is is very oriented to living from the head. And um, when when we do that, there's a sense, Rosalind says, TGIF, <laughs> indeed. So um, when when we live from our head, we're living disconnected. Um, until there is some balance from the heart, the guy we don't have we don't have the full wisdom of our being available to us without the input of the heart. And if we're if we're all heart, um, there may be there may be some bits that we're missing you know that we are given head and heart we are given body and mind and spirit and excluding any portion of it is not going to bring us to wholeness at least that's my working hypothesis at the moment. And so this goes for the parts of ourselves that we exile as well. You know, I don't, if, if um, a part of me gets angry and I, I try to squash it and put it away, um, then 
I'm I'm denying that part. I'm not including it as part of myself, and it is part of a greater whole. Uh, we are all of it, and we get to expand to include it rather than trying to surgically remove these parts of ourselves that we don't like or or put them in some kind of cage or closet and override them and ignore them. And um, that's just a way that we continue to fracture ourselves. So I had a conversation yesterday, uh, I think it was yesterday, about ego. And ego gets a bad rap as far as I'm concerned. We can't function in this world without ego. I think when we generally talk about ego, we're talking about a toxic ego <clears throat> where, where we're getting um, disconnected and very um, carried away with our our ego and ourselves but the fact is at least from my vantage point i'm sure there are people that would argue this and maybe very effectively but um without ego without a sense of self we can't really function as whole beings in this world and i i do believe that our ego is a portion of the the tool set that we were given to express life in the way in the unique way that we came here to express it and so what if we embrace the ego what if we embrace the mind and the body the callings of the body and to interact and and balance with that and the callings of the heart and the spirit. What if we become all of it? That's the path to wholeness. It, it doesn't make, as I get older, and I don't know that it's a function of age, but as, as I get older, I, it makes less and less sense of me to pretend that there are parts of us that don't exist. And trying to fight against them rather than align with them is a perpetuation of a paradigm that just is completely dysfunctional, you know, like battling against these parts of ourselves where we fracture ourselves into these, these irreconcilable pieces rather than finding a path to reconciliation. I mean, this is the this is a, a microcosm of the macrocosmic fight that we're in um, as a culture, as a world, where things are things and people and institutions and governments are pitted against one another rather than recognizing that we're all part of a greater whole. And we were talking about this in terms of flow and connection yesterday. And um, when, when we look at our selves as process rather than as product, if we look at the world as this interconnected, interwoven process of life unfolding, it provides a very different perspective. It provides very different potentials from this notion of being product, of being a fixed entity that because just by its definition, that fixed entity is static, is isolated, right? that fixed entity is separate. And the, the, as I see it in this moment, again, hypotheses, try it on, see if it works for you. 
But as I see it in this moment, the biggest challenge or all the challenges that we face right now on this planet is a result of disconnection and, and believing ourselves to be separate. And yes, this, this form is its own entity, this physical form that we have. Is, it, is its own entity, but it is not in any way independent of a greater system, of a greater whole. And as we connect more deeply with that greater whole, and there, there are many greater wholes, you know, like if we connect with the greater whole, for instance, of our entire life. Um, if we, let's even start earlier than that, if we can connect to the greater whole of our body, mind, and spirit, and to recognize that we are all of it, expanding to include all of it, instead of letting go of this and letting go of that, and we are all of it. And as we can expand to include all of it, ultimately we become not identified with any of it, right? That, that we become whole, we become all and nothing. We're no one thing, right? And in being everything, we are being nothing. And it might sound like I'm speaking cryptically, but it's not cryptic, actually. You know, when there's when there's everything, there's no one thing, right? So when when we see ourselves as as process, when we see ourselves as a flow of moments and experiences. What is it that's unifying that flow? There's a level of beingness. You know, it's not head, it's not heart, it's not gut. You know, it's all of it. It's all of it together. It's body, mind, and spirit and beyond, right? And then it's wholeness. And, and so in this awakening process we look for all these disciplines we want to quiet the mind we want to um, master the body um, and what if we could just embrace it all what happens is that our embrace expands and the potentials that are available to us when we create this or move into this unified experience, it's a, it's a completely different dimension of experience from the, the potential experiences from a place of isolation and separateness. And in this moment in time, we need a, a radical shift of paradigm in order to survive, actually. Uh, that we need to be able to come together to make uh, new collective choices that recognize the collective right that recognize humanity um, that recognize nature that recognize that humanity is part of nature and <laughs> what a concept so um last night on movie night for sustainability now which is by the way every thursday evening from 7 to 9 p.m we show uh, either interviews that we've done or videos, I invite you to go check out our website and sign up for the email list so that you can get notifications about these um, these 
features that we share. Anyway, last night we were watching a movie on biophilic design. And biophilic design is incorporating nature in the design of our buildings, in the design of our cities, uh, because, well, because we are part of nature. And um, as it turns out, when we are present to nature, when we are, are exposed to nature, uh, there we heal more quickly, we sleep better, there's less crime, there's more community, there's more connection. What, what a revelation, right? That nature actually, that nature actually heals us. Our connection to nature actually has an impact on our well-being, on our mental, emotional state. And so we have become so head-centered as a culture for so long that we have become so completely disconnected from our hearts and from the rest of our being, from nature, from our nature, and believed, believed in this separation between humans and nature. It's like the distinction, the separation between head and heart. And without that, we run amok. Without the connection to other living beings, whether they be plants or animals or fish or birds or um, trees, you know, it, it's, we become separated from ourselves and from our truest nature. And so this notion of head and heart is, again, sort of a, as we think about it, we often think about it in a way that is a polarizing way where it's head or heart <laughs> either or and i guess i guess what we're talking about here is moving from either or to both and and um the richness that that makes available to us so roslyn says Models are just models. That's like the map is not the territory. It's a map. The territory is, is the place, the actual place. So models are just models. Um, Rosalind says, I've been looking for truth with a capital T. I think try, trying to understand one's nature, oneself's nature, is a lifelong process. I agree with you. 100% Rosalind, I think it is a lifelong process. And I think that there are different times in our lives through different experience, <clears throat> excuse me, that different vistas, different pathways, different understandings unfold. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know that the perspectives that I have now um, or the experience of the perspective that I have now, I don't know if it would have been available to me at another time of life without the life experience that I've had. I, I would hope so. I would hope that that's indicative of evolution is that we can, we grow into new paradigms, that we emerge into new paradigms uh, with new generations. I see, I see such a profound need at this time for this sense of 
connection and communion and whether it is you know literally with people face to face which could be wonderful uh, but just this notion of our of our inseparability I was going to say connection but connection kind of presumes separation and and here it's like it the the notion of separation is just a bogus notion you know when when we recognize how interconnected and interdependent we are and and this happens on all levels it ha happens on the level of taking ownership of ourselves you know in, in um, welcoming in and embracing all aspects of ourselves and of our beings rather than saying I like this part I don't like that part I you know I'm gonna get rid of this get rid of that I just want to get rid of it um, there's a distinction between getting rid of something and healing something and when there's when there's pain, when there's emotional, physical, mental pain from this new vantage point, or maybe it's not so new, but from the connectedness vantage point, all of those things are indicators that there's something that needs to be addressed when we're suffering it's an indicator that there's something to be addressed the suffering is a symptom we get to look at what is that about and what's beyond that to begin to heal it so this this theme is just coming up more and more deeply for me and and i am feeling it coursing through me in a new way to be really presencing ourselves to this place of of flow you know what if really really try it on try it on it makes such a different experience or at least it's making such a different experience it's the dawning of a new experience for me in this place of being process you know that being an expression of life expressing itself you know being a, a function of life rather than being something in the world then then everything that i'm being is an expression of that life expression uh, Rosalind says, how does one deal with body pain using today's topic if someone suffers hip pain, for example? Yeah, so that's that's a really good question. So if there's hip pain, the likelihood is it's not just the hip. You know, what's happening is that there's some kind of something going on physically, emotionally, spiritually that is creating this pain. I can't tell you how many sessions I've done with people that have been in in pain and then after an emotional or an energetic release the pain has gone and I've seen that happen a lot with myself the thing is that there's when there's pain it's a signal and there may be you know maybe you're something's wrong with your foot and because your foot is out of balance or your step is out of balance, it's throwing your, your shoulders out of balance, which is throwing your hip out of balance. You know, it, what is, what's going on? There's something going on, but it's not just the hip. And we have, we've been conditioned to look at the symptom as the source. And the symptom is an expression of the source. The symptom is an expression of something else that's going on. We don't always have the ability to interpret what that is. You know, but when there's illness in a system, it's part of a system. 
when there's cancer in a system, it's part of a system. There's something in the system that was allowing for that to occur. And it's not just the site of the, of the symptom. It's not just the site of the cancer, for example. It's not just the site of the pain or the physical expression of the pain. I've done sessions with people where they've had pain and through the course of the session, the pain migrates. It migrates and it shifts and it changes. And that's not even a physical session. That's something that's happening energetically through releasing emotions, through changing thoughts, through shifting frequency. And so maybe, you know, like with hip pain, if you can, and, and this is not a guarantee, but if you can presence yourself to the pain, if you can sort of sink into it and allow yourself to be curious about, well, what's there, what's underneath it? Who knows what might be released? It reminds me of a time when I twisted my ankle really badly, actually. I, I thought I broke it. Um, and I just sat with it. I sat with it. It probably was maybe an hour, just like being present to the pain. And the more present I was to it, the more it hurt. And at one point it became excruciating. And what came up for me was deep grief over the loss of my father and the relationship that we had and um, deep, deep grief. And I allowed myself to feel that that's what came up. And don't you know, the pain in my ankle went away and I was able to walk. So we're, we're miraculous beings and we exist on so many different levels. And we try to, we just um, oversimplify things by, by trying to deal with the mechanics. You know, it may be like, I just thought of a bike chain, a chain on a bicycle. I don't even know if bikes have chains anymore, but... Um, you know, where the chain might be wearing because of the way that the, maybe the wheel is out of alignment, which is knocking the gears, which is wearing the chain. You know, it's, it's all part of a system. And so it may be that a vertebra in our neck is whacked out and that's what's jamming up our hip because of the misalignment of our body and trying to compensate you know, and it may be that there's an emotional factor to that, I would venture to say that there most likely is. And so what today's conversation is about is head and heart, not head or heart. You know, it's about integrating our whole being and and recognizing that there is this vast flow of life and energy that we are integral to and that is integral to us and there's kind of no escaping that as long as we're here if we really and maybe even beyond uh if we really look at it That is the truth of it. That is the truth of it. And we have our, our particulate particle manifestation as part of this greater wave. We are all of it. So with that, that's going to wrap it for the week. And uh, I wish you a wonderful weekend. I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Eastern. And I invite you to check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network and Enlightened World Living. 
And I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to be with you and have these conversations. Hopefully they're stimulating and eye-opening and expansive. And I know that that's the case for me. And I'm so grateful to you for the opportunity. So until next time, so much love to you.